No Boundaries radio show may contain adult material and coarse language. Listener discretion is advised. and you're listening to No Boundaries Radio, where all the vampires hang out late at night. Hi there, this is the artist Mike Spliss. I'm over here in London and I'm here to tell you that No Boundaries Radio has gone global and is drawing listeners from all over the world. This is Donna Stewart from Sci-Fi Radio and you're listening to No Boundaries Radio. They're a little messed up, but they're cool. Welcome to the No Boundaries Radio Show. 
Are you ready for a wild ride in radio entertainment? Let's welcome our host, William Maltese, author of over 200 books, and Jojo from Vampireware, creator of jewelry and clothing for the undead. Okay, everybody, welcome to the No Boundaries Radio Show. And uh, we're finally on. <laughs> and uh, I wanted to uh, give a shout out. We um, had uh, we played some uh, Jet Set Rejects at the beginning of the show. And they're playing uh, this Saturday, May the 4th, at the Tiki Bar in Costa Mesa, California, with uh, Cherie Curry from The Runaway. So that's pretty cool. And uh, William, so what have you been doing all week? You're sure and we're on the air. Sure yes, we are. What are you drinking? Oh. Okay, what am I drinking? What have I been doing all week? Well, mainly the weather, the winter weather is set back in, in my neck of the woods, JoJo. So I've mainly kept indoors and not done much of anything. But that said, both of my mainstream, my mainstream Maze and Murder, a cozy mystery novel, and my mainstream Everyday Gourmet, a memoir, are both now available in either Nook or Kindle, for those of you who have been asking when it would happen, and My Love's Golden Spell, which was my mainstream mystery adventure super romance I initially wrote for Harlequin as Willa Lambert, is now is released as a Kindle under my William Maltese byline, if you, anybody wants to pick up that. As far as the drink I'm drinking this evening, and so far I've consumed a mighty, <laughs> yeah, um, <I> know. <laughs> a mighty lot of them. And in keeping with the vampiric theme of tonight's show and tonight's vampiric guest, not to mention vampiricvampirewear.com, as well as my pension for liquor-layered drinks, I'm having several and we'll probably end up having several more Vampire Eclipse cocktails. Oh, nice. Yeah, which are one half ounce grenadine, one half ounce orange juice, one maraschino cherry, one ounce light rum. You pour the grenadine in a shot glass gently. You pour in the orange juice down the side of the glass so as not to mix the layers. Then ever so gently, you lower the cherry through the orange juice to rest on top of the grenadine and top it all off with the rum. Wow. So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> now, what are you, what have you in Empire Well, I'm actually having it's some going. Dan Aykroyd white wine here. So that's pretty cool. Um, oh, where is his vineyard? Is it in California? Um, I'm not sure. Sh- well, he's Canadian. So I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, you're having a Canadian wine. I'm having a Canadian Ooh. wine, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. I'm still so surprised that they grow enough grapes in Canada. Oh, to... yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Niagara Falls and all that, they have, um, they're really popular for the ice wine because the, the grapes Oh, yeah, freeze. because of the grapes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's like amazing. Yes. And there's a lot of, um, yeah, a lot of wine tasting in that out there, too. Even, like, you know, not just the ice wine, the regular wine. So there's a lot of good Ontario wines. So maybe oh, I'll have I to send have you to some, William. I'll have to Canadian <laughs> wines. That's an my series, yes. Yeah, I'm good drunk in Canada. Yeah, so, but for Vampaware, um, I have a good deal on right now. Any orders over $50, they get um, free shipping. If they put in the voucher code, just put in free ship. <laughs> and that's ship. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah, F R E S H I P in the voucher code area. And also, I wanted to let everybody know that we're putting our archives up now on YouTube. So um, I, I have it on the Vampaware um, YouTube right now because I already had like lots of viewers and stuff so it's youtube.com slash vampireware and uh we'll see you know we've only got uh i'm putting up uh rick boom steals tonight which was a good show last week and um and then we'll see we'll maybe change to a a no boundaries channel on there too but for now it's just youtube.com slash vampireware but i don't want to prolong this any longer because we want to get Alexandra on <laughs> and so our, our guest tonight is Alexandra Anthony and she loves all things vampire and enjoys writing romantic erotic stories combining vampires the paranormal and the notion of Prince Charmings with happy ever endings she's a paranormal erotic romance writer with bite so uh, welcome to the show Alexandra 
Yeah. Hi. Was that was that was that Alexandra barking or was that someone else? <laughs> no, that was not me. Uh, my voice was... isn't that deep yet. Maybe if I drink a few more drinks, it might. Oh, well. no, that was my big mouth dog that somebody just let into the oh. house. Oh, see, and I was going to blame Eddie again. No, Eddie's Eddie's sleeping behind me here. He's Eddie's fine. sleeping behind you. He's oh, being a good boy. Okay. Well. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> okay. Beginning finally, Alexandra. Why don't you just start out? And tell everybody, tell those of our listeners who don't know, just how you started, just how you were inspired to start writing. Period. You know, uh, just. Well, let's see. I've I started writing actually. I published my first book. Oh, it'll be a year ago this month. Um, I've always loved vampires and thought, well, I like to write. I've always written, and I thought, well, let's give it a shot. See what we can do. And that's where it all began, and here I am now writing my fifth book. So, wow. Okay, <laughs> then why why erotic romance vampires specifically, and why not just the ordinary run of the mill castle creeping vampires? <laughs> well, I mean, there's nothing wrong with castle creeping vampires. You know, I mean, they have their place. I just personally thought you know i like more i I get tired of like i read a lot and you read a lot of vampire books and they're all this it gets to the good part and then it's like oh they fade you know the end of the chapter or it's a chapter break and they skip all the good part so i thought you know why not combine the two vampires i would be really sexual creatures in my opinion so put it in there Uh uh-huh no sex is a sweet vampire novel I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I missed that too, Alexandra. Call, I wasn't sure call, what William was saying. Romances with no romances with no sex. Sweet romances. Are you aware of that? Oh, is that no. sweet romances? No. Yeah, that's well, the that's oh. the genre. If you add sex to it, it becomes something else. But sweet uh-huh. ones are the old Harlequin. The whole Harlequin ones where you oh. you you stop you stop before sex. So I was thinking that would be a sweet vampire novel. But apparently that went over everybody's head. So I'll just have another drink. (laughs) Well, that's what I was going to ask. So I guess that's what Twilight would be then. I guess it would be a sweet sweet romance then, I guess, since they always go fade to black then. Yeah. Yeah, with with sparkling. (laughs) They would sparkle and it's sparkling. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's sparkling (laughs) then. I shouldn't make fun. Actually, I'm very jealous of that author who made all of that money. Oh, I think we all are. I think yeah, anybody that writes vampire stuff, we're all jealous. That we, you know, we all want our movie to be uh, out there. But of course, then when you're out there, you're ridiculed. So you know, everybody yeah. makes fun of sparkly vampires. So yeah, yeah. But I'd she, like she to can... come up with something that people would make funny of fun of while they're putting money in my. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Okay, they well, they can make you, fun what? all the way to the bank, right? Yeah, yes, yes, that, that's, that, that's what I think. By the way, I do have a couple of vampire novels out there, which people should start buying so that I can pay my yacht fees in Nice. So you might want to keep that in mind. Although this is Alex. <laughs> it's show. her show, yes, William. That's right. So I suppose we can move on. Okay, then, Alexander. Why series rather than just... Lone individual books, because you have two series out now, if I'm, I'm correct. I, yes, I have two series out right now, and I decided to go the series route because I guess I'm a fan of the cliffhanger. I don't like everything to be wrapped up in a nice little needy, like nice little neat package. I enjoy like stringing people along um, and making them want to read the next book. Series out it. right now, and I decided to go the series route because I guess I'm a fan of the cliffhanger. Is she repeating herself? No. No. <laughs> oh. Who was I kidding? In <laughs> oh, okay. Go ahead. I didn't really mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, Continue. Yeah. Yes. That's why I chose to do the series uh, route two. Plus, you can see the characters grow from book one to book two, three, wherever you are. You can kind of see their growth as, as characters. You see them change, either stronger or weaker or whatever the case may be. So, you don't always see that in just... Uh, you know, a standalone book. You you know, you may see some character growth throughout the book, um, but I think you definitely can see that more, in my opinion, in a series book. Do your books then stand on their? Do each book in the in the series stand on their own, or is it just 
I mean, is there a beginning, middle, and end to each book, or is it just one long soap oh, opera series where nothing really gets solved until somewhere 20 books up the line? Well, I mean, I, there's always a story within each book that does need some resolution in the book, but then we start, then there's some new conflict will start at the end of the book that'll carry over into the next one. But there is a story to each book, and you do need to know what happens in book one to know what it, what's going on in book three, or you're going to be lost and not have any idea what's going on. Oh, so you have to start at book one and keep on going, yes. not jump in in the middle of the series. Well, I mean, you could, but you're not going to, you know, there's stuff you're going to miss from book one, and you're going how to... Long, how, long are, how, long are your, how long are your books? Um, the Vampire Destiny series, they're about anywhere between 58 to 65,000 words. So that's about 160 pages. Um, really? Because most of them sell for like only 99 cents, don't they? Yes. I started and, yes. and the books are that, and the books are that, are the books are that long? Usually 99 cent books are just short little nothings. Well, since it was my, you know, my, it was my, um, first series i decided you know i didn't know how well it would go over and i thought well you know i'll put the faded out and see what it does because you know it could have people could read it and have hated it and there are people that do but now with the dark car chronicles it is a bigger book it is now a dollar 99 so i have raised you know i have gone up in price because you're getting you know it's 214 pages that's still a um, that's still a good price is it making you lots of money do you it live is. in a mansion now and <laughs> moving to New Orleans? She lives in a like vampire <laughs> yes, castle. I'm actually, calling you from one of my mansions. I have three that connect to each other. With uh, I see. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean oh. it's it's a night. Nice, it, it's not making me rich, but um, you know I would rather make the books reasonable as well and let people be able to afford to read them than not. Okay. And? Then why a why a why, a, why self-publish instead of a traditional publisher? Well, I didn't really want to send my book out to, you know, the, to, to the big six. And there, that may be less now because a lot of them are joining forces and get a lot of rejection letters when I can control what I want to put in the book. Um, I can write about what I want to write about and I don't have, you know, I can do what I want to do. And when you write with, when you're signed with a publishing house, they can reject your idea and say, you, you can't write this in here. You know, you can't put this content in there. So they do have some say. So publishing gives you the freedom to be able to write what you want to write. You're a control, control freak as a matter of them. <laughs> yeah. I'm a control freak in every aspect. You can ask anybody that knows me well. I like to control everything to the smallest detail. Yes. Oh, anal, <laughs> anal, anal retentive. Yes. Uh, just a tad. Someone yeah. someone in chat, Alexander, is just saying, um, seriously, Alexandra's va- Vampire Destiny series is the bomb. I am absolutely in love with her main character. And that's from Jeannie Vamp in chat. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, Jeannie Vamp. I, 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 I'm assuming, I don't know if you're talking about Josie or Stefan, but... Because they're really my two main characters. The story is written mm-hmm. from Josie's point of view, but Stefan is really the driving force behind, pardon the pun, <laughs> uh, <laughs> behind the story. So I appreciate that. Thank you. I love to, to hear from my fans who really, really love the books. That makes mm-hmm. always makes my day. And Jojo, would you like to jump in? I seem to be monopolizing the conversation. Well, I noticed as that. As usual. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he does that to me all the time. <laughs> yes, I know. And I'm, I'm polite. I just sit there and go, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So you just, you know, go but I wanted to ask you um, what your favorite uh, types of scenes to write are. And um, uh, do you get inspiration? Do you watch, like, uh, True Blood and all that? Does that inspire you sometimes or... Make you go, well, I want to make a character, but make him a little bit different. I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm definitely, you know, you, you watch different things and you're inspired by different characters. I mean, if, you know, I watch, I mean, I, I love vampires since I was probably 13 years old. Started reading Anne Rice when I, you know, was was very young. So I've always liked vampires. I think, you know, we all draw off of each other, you know, as far as inspiration. And, yeah, I mean, I'll see a vampire character, and I'm like, oh, well, you know, you, I like this character, but I'd like to change X, Y, and Z about that character. 
Okay. Um, my favorite scenes, of course, probably since I write in the romantic erotic genre, would probably be writing the smuttier scenes. Those are probably the the you know more fun to write than the um, the rest of the book. But you can't can so. always smut. <laughs> <laughs> you mean the plot? You're... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, I, it's, I, it's, I, write, I write the smut scenes and then write the plot around it. I was I calling know, it I Fifty know, Shades yeah. of Vampires. <laughs> <laughs> I know how I know how I've done that. I've done that for years. Yes, yeah. but the, um, I always figure anything that they can do in the plot, anything that can be done in the plot, can be done in in the bedroom. So you might as well just have it happen there and just kind exactly. of fill it, fill it so when, in while the dirty is going on. Yeah. But I was going to okay. ask you what, when the fourth book, um, Vampire Destiny series. I, I know there's five books total now, right? But they're uh, like they're not I, the fourth ones. You're waiting to put that out soon, or? Yes, Ascend, which is book four in the Vampire Destiny series, will be out late this month. Um, it's the fourth book in the series. That'll be my fifth book total. Um, but yeah, it's it'll be the fourth book in the Vampire Destiny series. So, uh, and there's going to be it's going to be a lot different. I mean, it's going to of course have the same characters. It's going to be there's going to be a lot of twists and turns in this book that I think people aren't going to anticipate. So. Yeah, and the Dark Hearts Chronicles, Tempted is the first one, right? That's yes. out now, and and so I wanted to ask you about that. Like it's 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 different characters and mm-hmm. from from what I've seen, and uh, the tr- the trailer for it is like super hot. <laughs> I was posting it all over <laughs> Facebook today, going check this out. <laughs> but um, if anybody wants to see the uh, trailer, um, what's what's your YouTube channel? Uh, I think. Oh my gosh! It's. I, I think it's just. I think it's Alexandra Anthony or Alex. That's horrible that I don't know my own YouTube channel. I can look it up. Uh, it's either Alexandra Anthony or Alexandra Anthony eighty. Oh okay. Because uh, yeah, because I couldn't. I, I was. I saw it on there from your website, which is alexandra anthony dot com. So I was looking at it from there, and then I was trying to find the just the the youtube channel but if anybody puts in alexandra anthony and put in uh, dark heart chronicles you're, you're going to find it and and we've got it all over facebook too so <laughs> yeah, you can go to my website if there is a link on there i think i have a link to everything known to man uh, that i have on here so uh, you can always find it on there too in fact i have both of the videos are actually embedded on my website where mm-hmm. all my books are listed too so yeah that's where i found them and I, I watched the first one and i posted it and then i was watching the dark heart chronicles and i went whoa this is a good one <laughs> it's ex- yeah, the, excellent yeah it's definitely i tried to do a little bit different uh um you know i step with i stuck with the romantic erotic theme but i've tried to put more build up into this story so um and so far, it's you know it's been well received. Uh, a lot of people really like it. I was afraid that poor Nick, which is my main uh, male character, he had big shoes to fill with Stefan, and I was afraid, oh, are people going to like Nick? But so far, people like Nick, so it's going well. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. So, how many do you think you'll you'll put out with that series or Chronicles? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, right now I'm trying to, you know, well, it's kind of on in the back burner of my mind because I'm trying to get Ascend finished up. Um, Right now, I really don't know. I mean, I know there's at least going to be another follow up, probably two or three at this point. I can I can see right now, but I tend to be a more organic writer. And a lot of my plot comes to me as I'm writing. I mean, I may write some basic notes out what I want to do in the book, but I tend to to write kind of by the seat of my pants and well there's no uh, rules you can do as many as you want right right as long as there's a story that i feel is is worth putting out there i'll put Mm -hmm. them out there if there's if i feel that there's not i mean i'm not going to just put something out just to put it out it you know it has to has to have something to it yeah i'm not the kind of girl who puts out just to put out (laughs) no i i don't just put out (laughs) Uh, uh, nice analogy, William. <laughs> okay, all right. But, uh, okay, I'll take your word for it. Look, do you do anything by, by way of? Do you do anything? What do you do by way of marketing? Do you, need, do, you do do anything different? I mean, 
in regard to marketing? I mean, you seem to have a lot of readers. I mean, I've, I've, I've checked your your sites, and I've checked your Facebook pages, and I've checked your fan base, and you seem to have a, a generally good fan base. And I wonder if there's anything that you do differently in regard to marketing, what you're doing, I rather know. than relying on... Go ahead. I, just, I try a lot of different things. I mean, that makes it hard to judge what works and what doesn't. But I try to put my, you know, I try to do a lot of different things. I do have a street team who um, either post my links on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest. They also um, pass out my cards to people they think would like my books. Um, you know, I sign up for different um, that actually will tweet out links to my books. And you know, there is a cost behind that. But, you know, it's one or two tweets go out a day where it mentions my book. That tends to work. I mean, there's a lot of different things that I do. I do a lot of guest blogging on other authors' blogs. We kind of take turns just so we can reach out to other authors that normally, or other readers, I should say, that wouldn't know about us, so to speak. So that's what I do. I do a mixture. I mean, I, you know, I try to be out there but i also don't you know i don't want to be in your face every five minutes like buy my book today have you bought it what about now did you buy it today so i try to be non-aggressive with it but just yeah you have to be clever with it you have to be like you know soft sell right yes yes i I find that works you know plus the fans that like my books i mean they tend to be they're very loyal and you know i do try to answer you know, if somebody takes the time to write me, a, you know, a, a, even an email, I always try to answer them, even if I can't write a long, long email. I always acknowledge everybody that, that writes to me the best that I can. It may take me a couple days to get back, but I do always, because I, I appreciate, without my fans, I wouldn't have book series out. Oh, you know? exactly. Are your fans, are your fans readers, quote unquote, or are they other people in the industry? I mean, are your readers like other authors and... Uh, um, or are they readers? I just find it very difficult. I've been I've been on a lot of these chat things, and it seems like I'm always there with nothing but a bunch of other authors or people in the business. And I, I they keep saying, "Well, we have fan we have a fan base that's out there lurking," but they never check in. I have. I mean, I think I would say probably ninety percent of my fan base I think are actual readers. Fantastic. Are, that's good. That's good. I'm, I'm happy to hear that. That there are people out there who are still reading who aren't in the business. Because it seems like everybody's in the business anymore. No, there it does. There's a lot. I mean, you know, now that the self-publishing has taken, you know, there's like a boom in that, and it's not looked upon like, you know, because it used to be looked at all this as like vanity type publishing. Um, and I think it's taken more seriously now. I mean, it's there's every, you know, a lot of people are writing. Um, but I would say probably the majority of my of my fans are actual readers and not writers. I mean, I do have writers that that read my books, but I would say probably, like I said, I, I would say 90% would be a good guesstimate as to my readers, that they are people that want to read, mm-hmm. you know, something different, or they want more than just the sweet romance books. And some people that like the sweet romance books will pick mine up and they're like, oh, this is the smuttiest thing I've ever read. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, I know the type. Yeah. Yeah, but in in chat, yeah, someone's saying Stefan is the bomb. (laughs) And he's just so sexy and perfect. And then, uh, don't get me wrong, I like Josephine, but, oh, I like Josephine too, but Stefan, dot, dot, dot. (laughs) (laughs) So, So those are definitely readers. Yeah, yes, you know, people love Stefan, you know, I, I mean, I think, you know, I put him up on such a pedestal, it's like, you know, when you write for him, it's like, you're like, oh, what if I write this, and they don't, you know, they don't like it, because, you know, I know if I had some people like, I don't care what you write, just don't break them up. Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh, is Stefan <laughs> with somebody special? Yes, Stefan and Josephine are the, are the couple. Um, and Stefan's a third? <laughs> third in the menage oh is boy <laughs> here we go <laughs> um or josephine but um yeah it's just the two of them and I, that's what i hear everybody's like don't break them up don't break them up so oh you have to be careful because people get really obsessed by the characters right yeah oh and, and yeah, they you can know, go oh, oh, i, I won't read it anymore if they break up you know yeah 
Yeah, I mean, you know, so you've, you've got a responsibility, too. You know, I don't want to, mm. I couldn't imagine. Well, I, right now, I mean, I couldn't imagine writing a scene where they would be like, I don't want to be with you anymore, and, and, and walking away from that. That would be totally bizarre for me to even imagine. And plus, I don't want people lined up outside my door with pitchforks. So, <laughs> I, they're staying they did, they, they did it on the They did it on the Vampire Diaries. Well, I see. I, I, that's another thing too. See, I guess I'm I'm, 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 I'm traditionalist at heart because I like to imagine that you could find your soulmate out there, and you can have all kinds of external crap go on around you, but you don't have to have triangles and octagons and yeah things like Aww. that. Aww. That's so, not too I know. Bad. That's okay. I'm a big mush at heart. <laughs> no, Me too. Me a romantic. Too. That's why you write romances. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> Do you? Okay. I mean, Do you want? Go ahead. No, no. I have got you. No, no. But I wanted <laughs> to ask you. I'm going to because... give you at least a minute where you can talk. Go ahead. <laughs> well, well, no. Just a minute. Of... Okay. Let me get out my timer. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I was yeah, talking to I'm Alexandra. Now, I have a stopwatch here. William. No. Shush. <laughs> I was talking to Alexandra on Facebook. God. Oh my gosh, I'm having a blonde moment. Go ahead, I can't. Remember. <laughs> I will say I'm. Jojo, a, I'm you a... want to ask her about the hauntings in her house? Yes, I did. We head yes. off the air since we are heading yes. towards the end of our show. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because I know you had um, some hauntings in a house you you uh, lived in. Yes, uh, the house I grew up in. Um, definitely has a has at least one presence in it that wants you to know that it's there i think it lives in the basement of the house and i remember growing up its favorite thing to do you would go you would leave the house and come home and all the like lids off the shampoo bottles oh would weird. be off must have had nice hair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they like to turn lights on and off um you know, just just things like that. I just wanted you to know you're there. Now, my dad's had more experience than with it than me. He's actually had a tap on his shoulder, Ugh. but whatever it is, is not like you in its space, and it's its space is in the basement. And when you're down there, it lets you know because it's almost like you could feel like when somebody's standing really close to you, and you can almost feel something breathing on your neck. Okay. That's what it. That's what it's like. It's very. Um, I wouldn't say it's an evil presence. It just doesn't want you in its business, so to speak, I guess. Is this house still in your family? If my parents live in it, yes. They still live in it? Oh, wow. They still live in it, yes. And they come home all the time, and the lights, like, they leave, and the lights will be on. They come home, the lights will be off. It likes to unlock doors. Um, Not a good yeah, thing, so they, they still doors. live. <laughs> It, uh, like I said, so yeah, I, you know, I grew up in that type environment. Um, where I live now, when we first moved here, I don't know if there was something here or not, but we used to hear like chairs sliding around in our house. Kind of slacked off. I kind of was like, whatever's here, you need to move on, and I haven't heard it since. And the only other experience, I, I don't know if I'm sensitive to that, is I. I get a lot of different scents. Like I'll walk into a room and like you'll I'll smell like something powdery or a cigarette smell, and nobody in my house smokes and or uses powder. So maybe I'm sensitive to those things. I don't know, but or yeah. somebody passing through. I don't know. I, I get. Can that. we look? Can yeah. we look forward to a uh, ghostly series sometime in the future based upon your experiences? Uh, I don't know. I've never thought about trying to write, you know, something with with a ghost. I, I don't know how. I don't know if I could write. I mean, could you write a ghostly erotic book? Mm. I don't know. Hmm. Sex with ghosts. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> very, very ethereal. Yes. <laughs> Although there's there people that be, say that they have had sex with ghosts. Some, yeah, there might be some problems there. Yeah, but, uh, I, don't, I don't know. I'm sure that you could work. I don't think they're as hot as vampires, so hey. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Vampires. I mean, I, at some point, I, I you know, I've set a goal for myself that I'm going to write a non-paranormal erotic romance so that at some point will happen i don't know when but i'm going to write a book where we i don't have to have the paranormal or you know i might yeah. throw some it won't be vampires maybe yeah okay well, that's interesting. jojo are you watching the time because i really don't know yeah. what's going on yeah no we've, we've got so about five minutes you left wanna make, yeah, okay because you want to make sure that we don't yeah yeah okay. yeah just as long as you're watching and all that you 
Yeah, and I, I just carry want, on then. <laughs> so yeah, I just wanted to ask uh, Alexandra if if you had any advice for for other other writers or aspiring authors, because I'm sure there's some listening to the show. Well, it's funny, you know. Last night I was actually, and I won't be long winded with this, but Anne Rice had uh, I follow her on Facebook, and she had um, somebody a, a blogger would tore apart one of her books, and she she always brings up bad reviews and just yeah. has people to discuss it. And I actually responded to Anne Rice. She actually responded to me last oh, night. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Which was, I mean, that was like, you know, fangirl moment. When I know. Like, You're, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I screen capped it. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. Anne Rice responded. Yeah. But, and somebody was said, you know, I really want to write, but hearing what you're saying about people that are spiteful with reviews makes me not want to write. Mm. And I guess the thing I would tell people is you're going to have, you know, artist objectives. You know, you two people could look at the same painting, for instance, and one person could like it and the other could hate it. Don't let the fear of what people are going to say keep you from writing if that's what you want to write. Because somebody out there is not going to like it. You're not going to please everybody oh, in absolutely. life, regardless. Yeah. So that would be my advice. If you want to write, you know, don't let the fear of somebody not liking it keep you from writing. That's that's that applies to artwork, everything, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, I mean, I get them vampire too, you know, people going, oh, you know, vampires, oh, you know, like they're they're yeah. nasty about it and stuff. But yeah, that just applies to everything. So, yeah. So that would be mm-hmm. my advice is, you know, don't let a couple people that, you know, don't like, you yeah. know, don't, don't let the fear cripple you or keep you from writing if you feel that you want to do it. Because you could write, I mean... You, know, you could write the world's perfect novel, and there's going to be one person out there that's going to not like it. Yeah, yeah, and and not actually, even all pole dancers are good. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Very that come true. from? <laughs> Very true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ab- absolutely, and and like they said, uh, even sometimes bad publicity is good publicity. So. You well, you know, know like what? You said, it, sometimes it's good to get the negative reviews because if yeah. you get all you know positive reviews, people are going to be like, "Oh, are, are you know, are these all shrill?" Or yes. you know, it, yes. you know what I mean. So you need to yeah. have a mix of people that don't like it and people that do like it. I think that that's honest. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, because like you said, you know, there's people out there that aren't going to, you know, get into that kind of stuff. So whatever. But, uh, yeah, I wanted to make sure, too, before the, we ended our show, that everybody knows where to find you, Alexandra. Like I said, the best way, if you want to find a, any way to contact me, is to go to my website. It's www.alexandra-anthony.com. I have an online store. There's links to all of my books. You can actually order books through my website directly and i will i will sign an autograph and send them your way um also some merchandise t-shirts etc on the site and like i said you can find links to youtube uh all my links to amazon barnes and noble Smashwords are all there so that's probably the easiest place if you want to find me you can find me there and find the links to my blog everything are right there on my website yeah, and that's excellent because I even seen you had like coffee mugs and mouse pads mm-hmm. and everything there. So, so that that would be the easiest place to find me, other than rattling off a thousand places. Yeah. I'm all, <laughs> you know, it, it's all it's all there. Twitter, there's links to everything. Facebook, like when you go to the main page of my screen, over to the right, there's all the little buttons you can press. It'll connect you to Facebook, yeah, Twitter, your Pinterest, everything. Yeah, and your your site's very very well done. I must say that. Thank so, you. so yeah. So we're going to post that on our Facebooks, William. Yes. Make sure everybody knows Alexandra's website. And uh, yes, we we have to get going because we have to pass off to um, Ginger, who's here. Yes. Um, she has the the show Butterfly Effect. She's on right after us. And good program. Tune in. It's a good program, and I'm just so much okay. Alexandra. Goodbye. Thank you for stopping by, Alexandra. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me again. It was good to be back. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. I wanted to write you a song A song you could sing Forever And I 
Could make up. 